Good morning, Chicago. No, no, no. I've done this before. We're going to start again, right? Need a bit of energy from you. I've come three and a half thousand miles just for you guys to show you my big fat head. I'm really sorry. We didn't realize that will be changed, that slide, very soon. Good morning, Chicago. Good morning. Oh, we're awake. Thank you. I know you've had one coffee. We will be serving coffees later. Watch out as well. You've got Devon at the back. Any trouble from Bill? He will be throwing Bill out. That will be good to watch. But my name is Mike Richards. Exactly as it says on the screen, I run the Treasury Recruitment Company. What does that mean? That means that I place people like you into jobs. Treasury assistant, treasury analyst, through to global treasurer on a global basis. In the US, I recruit US to US. My colleague Katie does Europe to Europe. Gray does UK to UK. So I'm placing you guys, moving you for your next role. So, so Mike, this isn't meant to be a sales pitch, and it's not. This is about my personal brand and why they've invited me here, can't believe it, for the 10th time. They're mental. But they have asked me, said, look, Mike, how do you get all your knowledge? How do you find out about all these treasurers? Simple, a podcast. I thought four and a half years ago, we do 10 episodes, have a chat some treasurers, see how it went. 115,000 downloads later, 270 episodes, and I've talked some amazing treasurers. Someone said to me the other day, actually just yesterday, well, what kind of level of treasurers? So just some of the, the list, the roll call, if you like. Gary Maguire, global treasurer Dow. Tim from ServiceNow. Patrick McCartin, global treasurer Caterpillar. Where, who else? Wendy's, Heinz, Hilton, Victoria's Secret, NASDAQ, Broadridge Financial. Amazing guests. So go on there, treasurycareercorner.com. What do I talk to the people about? How do they start in Treasury? When they were Treasury analysts, like some of you in the room here, how do they get to Treasury manager? And eventually, as they're global treasurers, what issues do they face? What are the views they have about you know, what's happening with the banks? Just saying to Devon before, I actually feel for the guys next door. They're saying how to attract and retain talent in the banking industry. I'm saying, good luck, come here. So, this is my 10th time of coming here. Can't quite believe it. You keep inviting me. These are some of the issues I talk about, about talent. Today I'm going to talk about networking and personal brand. Why for you as treasury professionals, not for me, for you it's important. But the difference is, usually, I'm just before the drinks. And if anyone is about to go for a drink straight after this, I've got some numbers that I can share with you, some counsellors we know. But seriously, usually, I'm tomorrow night, as I said to Devon, just before we all head off for a drink or two, or seven. But in actual fact, today, I'm starting the conference. Why? Because it's you guys that are important. Not switching on the computers, you know, doing all the stuff and everything else, doing a treasury management system. It's you guys. They're actually operating it. It's not in actual fact, just looking here, or some of the other notes I had about this, it's you in this room that are important. So, networking. Hang on, Mike. I'm a treasury professional. I don't need networking. I don't need a new job. We're going to come on to that later. No, you don't. Not yet. But by the time you might need a new job or you might want to expand your network, it's too late. Do the work now. We'll come on to that in a minute. So, as we dive into this, some people will say, Hang on, personal branding, why is it so important? Well, I'm up here now, when I go out of this session afterwards, I'll be having a coffee. Any of you welcome to come and join me, talk to me. Now, we've already short-circuited the first part. The first part is who I am, what do I do? Usually I have my badge there and it goes, Mike, I'm a treasury recruiter. You know that. We can jump to the interesting part. Okay, for you as treasury professionals, why is that important? Well, if you've got a personal brand, you've built it up online through, say, things like LinkedIn or other ways, offline like this, in person, hopefully one of you guys might be on the stage next year. Put your hand up, get involved, get networking, because then your personal brand does the work for you. Now, I was trying to bring in some practical examples of when I've actually seen this work in, in action. And I spoke to a treasurer a couple of years ago now, 
and we looked at his LinkedIn profile. It was one of the worst profiles I've ever seen in my life. He was like, how bad is it? I went, I don't want to talk about your profile. Let's keep moving on. But what we did was worked on his profile, worked so well that then his HR team used to use it as an example to treasury interns and to treasury analysts when they were wanting to join the company, come and be like Mark. And in actual fact, what they did with Mark was they showed him, or they showed rather his profile, and these guys wanted to join. He apologized to me for recruiting two people without pay paying me a fee. That's all right, I didn't mind. We're okay, we're over it. So, top tips. Now, obviously, we're going to talk about LinkedIn in a minute. We're going to deep dive in that. And I have seen a few of you guys and your LinkedIn profiles. Yeah, we'll be talking about those later. Yeah, some of you need some work. I'm not going to say who. I haven't seen Devon's yet. We'll have a look in a minute. So, it's not just, just meeting people anymore, just coming to this conference. This is a key part of it. But one of the other key parts of it is actually online and actually having a presence there as well. Now, we'll talk about some of the do's and dangers. If you like, let's keep going. Power of your personal brand. Don't worry, I'm not going to just talk through the slides. I'm going to keep drinking some water. Here we go. The question nowadays isn't, do you have a personal brand? You all have one, whether you like it or not. The question is, come on, how do you make it powerful? Now, what do I mean by powerful? You need to reach out through the glass. You need to engage with people before they've even met you. But I'm not looking for a job, Mike. I'm very happy. I'm on LinkedIn. Why do I have to be on LinkedIn? I'm not looking for a job. It's just, it, yes, a lot of their revenues are from jobs. But in actual fact, it's a networking site. And actually someone asked me, let's go back to some of my notes here. They're actually asking me a little bit. They were saying, Mike, how do I build my network? We'll come on to connection building a bit later. But basically, say you had a LinkedIn network, and I saw a few of you that had three, maybe five connections. And you're looking at, say, a new treasury management system or looking at working with new financial partners. That's OK. You reach out to all five connections. Have you used them before? We need a new bank, funnily enough, you know, because we don't want to move away from Silicon Valley or whatever it might be. What do we do? Well, the fact is, if you've only got five people to ask, it's not really going to help, is it? What if you had 55 to ask? What well, if you have 505 to ask? That is going to help you do your job. So, let me get, keep going here. This is what Jeff Bezos said. Now, I believe in what Jeff said. He's rather successful with Amazon and everything else. But I think it's more than that. It's not just about what people say about you when you're in the room. I think it's also what they, come on, yes, think believe about you as well. It's the lasting impression you give them. When you go and meet people, and we'll do some exercise a little bit later, don't worry, not star jumps, we're okay. I don't want to see Bill doing that, that's, that's not a pretty picture. Um, what I want to do is get you to do some networking in this room. I do apologize. You're going to have to do some work here. So, it's your free sales tool, your LinkedIn profile. That's one of the key things, it's always there. It's always selling for you. If you like, I looked at it last night, 930 million people are currently on LinkedIn. Incredible figures. So, let's move past this. Don't need a personal brand. I haven't, some, some of the people I've actually looked at, a couple of the people I saw on the attendee list, don't actually have a LinkedIn profile. That's okay. I can understand why. But the point is, if you're not taking charge of it, somebody else is. They're making their mind up about you. And I've got a few nodding heads. Fantastic. You're letting other people decide what they think about you. So, LinkedIn. Wow, sorry. We're going to have to deep dive there. So, do you have to have a photo on LinkedIn? No, you don't. But when was the last time you walked into a business meeting and then just turned your back on everyone? You don't. I was talking to, was presenting to the Belgian Treasurers Conference previously. And Patrick, one of the really lovely treasurers, right at the front there, said, Pat, Patrick said, Mike, I don't really, you know, 
I've got a face of radio. I said, Patrick, I do a podcast, mate. I do audio only. You don't need to see this on YouTube. But the key thing was, I said, Patrick, when was the last time you walked into a bank meeting and went, hi, I'm Patrick. I'd like your business. Oh, I'd like to work with you. Doesn't make a very good impression, does it? The fact is, you're 21 times more likely to either make a connection or receive a connection request. So it's doing the work for you. It's your virtual handshake. But do make it a good photo. Now, people said to me, well, what's a good photo, Mike? Rogues Gallery. These photos are not real. Well, they are real. There are real people behind them. People have said to me, Mike, how bad are they? Well, we had to remake them. You might notice the model in a second. I know, I will sign autographs later. There you go. No selfies. That was just before I came to one of the uh, previous Windy Cities, dislocated my shoulder, got mostly through the conference through ibuprofen. Yeah, and beer. There you go. But no selfies. If you're tempted to do this, also just going back a stage, so one of the things I'm going to mention here, what, what you should do is double check. A lot of people I did look at, if they were second tier connections, I couldn't see your photo. People say, well, hang on, I've got a photo there. It's a really good one. Well, go in and check because LinkedIn changed their privacy settings a few years ago, which mean that any second tier connections don't see your photo. So they're not going to want to connect to you. So it's not doing the work. And it could do it for you for free. Right, Rose Gallery. So selfies. None of those, please. Now, again, these are remade photos. They're from real people. We have got the LinkedIn profiles for them. There you go. Don't get our jail free card. Basically, we saw this on one of the guys there. You're looking at it and you're thinking, really? Do you want that as your, your intro when you're walking? Hi, look at me. I'm so powerful. Oh, they're even worse. <laughs> these, are re these are real photos, guys. This isn't me. It gets worse. Now, Bill has seen this before, I know. It's my favorite. There you go. Now, we'll be lending uh, him the, my shirt later. That, I'm not even sure that should be on Facebook. You see these photos, you're thinking, you're, it's a professional networking site. It's not chugging beer site. Could be this. Got the mascara on. Wasn't me. We've seen this one as well. Now, this one, this next one comes up. We saw this with a treasury management systems consultant the other day. That was his actual photo. But he was actually there. And we, I really wanted to share to him the li link to the rogues gallery and say, I think you need to maybe have another look at your photos. Now, how does this apply to some of you? You're going, well, Mike, my photo's okay, but is it? Ask one of your family members who you can trust to give you honest advice and say, Should, is, how do you think my photo looks? When you upload your new photo, as some of you will be doing, check it on different devices, will you? And I'm sure you've also seen people that are 90 degrees to the left or right. It's just dreadful. We see these every day. But so upload your new photo, then check what it looks like on your phone or your friend's phone. What should it be like? Oh, please. That's my son 10 years ago. Really? He's not networking. He doesn't need a new job. Well, maybe he does, but we'll see. But it gives, you know, yes, great impression, family man and everything else. Make it appropriate. Friendly, approachable. Not having a laugh beer photo. And yes, Bill, I will be able to bring that shirt in later. Okay, as we work our way through the LinkedIn profile, because it's a key part of it, one of the main things we see next, personal statements. Oh, God, they drive me mad. Now, let me get some of the notes here, because I want to get this right. Here we go. Slightly out of order. But that's not bad. Um, basically, what I mean by this, what is a personal statement? So that could be, well, actually, no, one of the questions sorry, I got asked the other day was, is my LinkedIn profile... Surely just my online resume. No, it's not. Your LinkedIn profile is your highlights reel. It's not just a regurgitation, copy paste and stick it up there. It's your achievements. Now, one of the things that about, one of the reasons I hate personal statements, they are things like, and I saw this with one of my clients the other day, and on her LinkedIn profile, I, I have to be careful what I say here, it had people-centric leader, proven impactful, Trusted, collaborative, inclusive. 
all words that mean pretty much nothing. What should they mean? We'll come on to that in a minute. Again, these are some of the top words. Now, some of you might squirm when you see this, the thing what's on your LinkedIn profiles. Passionate, creative, treasury specialist, strategic and detail, candy floss for the mind. They are the top five most overused words on LinkedIn, as told, told to us by LinkedIn themselves. What should you have? Easy. Should be your so what moment. This should be show the real you. But Mike, how do I do that? I don't want to give away confidential company information. That's not what I'm asking. Talking to uh, Jim, really nice guy the other day. He was applying for lots of roles, wasn't getting anywhere with it. So we targeted a couple of positions, one in particular for a personal healthcare brand. It was their first expansion internationally. I said, Jim, you're applying for this role. So yeah, yeah. I said, you're just sending this resume, right? He went, yeah. <laughs> it had all this stuff on it, people leader and all this. I went, they're not going to read it. What are their problems? Now, it was the first time they'd expanded internationally. I said, I know that in your past, you've run treasury centers, right? He said, yeah, I've run one in the US, one in Europe, one in Asia Pacific. And you moved, didn't you move the system? Oh yeah, I moved the European center from Ireland across the Netherlands, did all that big project. I said, where does it say it? Jim, where does it say it on your resume? What does it say on your LinkedIn profile? Oh yeah, is that important? I went, literally, you are their paracetamol. You're solving their problems, and yet it's not there. And if it's just sitting there, and you're showing things that way, I'm not asking to give confidential information as well, but he ran a team of 34. We put it up there. He got to second round interview. He, or, sorry, got to second place. He didn't, unfortunately, get the role. He did get a role a couple of weeks later. How did he get it? From his LinkedIn profile. They wanted to reach out and connect with him. So, other things, do's and don'ts on there. Don't have mistakes. Just ask someone to have a look. You know, you, I'm sure you've got other people in your treasury team that can help you. So have a look at your profile. No date gaps. I was asked again by a lady the other day. She said, Mike, I've just had a break for childcare. You know, she's brought up a couple of kids. She's been three, four years. Should I leave a gap? I bet we can do. Or maybe you could do a thing called telling the truth. So I'll tell you what, it's harder work bringing up kids than I think a lot of the time than actually working in treasury. I think a lot of people will agree. So put it in there. One of the other things I don't want, I want a professional email address. Look, Mike can drink 15 beers at once at hotmail.com. We don't need that. LinkedIn features. Pictures worth 1,000 words. Exactly as it says. This is bringing out the real you. So if you, for instance, maybe one of you guys has presented on one of the sessions, maybe you're presenting later today, Put it up there. Film the session or put a link to the session to show what you do. Bring yourself alive. This is about bringing your personal brand alive. Because otherwise, you're just going to be another treasury professional. You want to stand out. Just a little bit different. What makes you different? We talked about Jim there. One of the other things that we talked about, he and I, was he had saved the company quite a lot of money. I said, where does it say that? He said, well, it's confidential. I said, no, but you can allude to it. You can explain that you moved through a different banking group, recruited your new financial partners, and he went international, where before you'd been local, and what you did through that process. And he was able to cut down some of the, the sort of project details, if you like, enough to make it interesting. And again, that's why he actually got his final role, or the role he's in now. Because they went, do you know what? That's who we want. That's our pain point. Be you're our paracetamol. So, other things here. I spoke at the AFP in Philadelphia last year. Amazing session. Because uh, I had two amazing guests, not me. It was Leanne Perkins for Specialized Bikes. She's amazing. Wonderful South African lady. One of the few South Africans I speak to. But, you know, we'll keep talking to her. We do love Leanne. And then Joel Campbell. He's a great example of having a personal brand. Now, Leanne has a really good one anyway. As she says, her network is her net worth. I'm going to steal that. It's a great one. Put it on a t-shirt. Love it. But Joel, very, very good treasury professional, was the treasurer, H&R Block, tax firm. He then got headhunted by Trevi Pay to be their CFO. He wasn't looking for a job. 
He's never looked for a job himself ever, actually. They've all come looking for him. Why? Because of his network, because of his personal brand. It's done the work for him. So in Trevi Pay, great example, they reached out to him. His h and block is enjoying it. They came to him. They said, oh, we'd like you to apply for our CFO job. I'm not looking for a job. No, no, because we'd like you to come and join us to be our CFO. He was amazing, got the job, and has been their CFO ever since. There's a picture of us in the room. It was the top rated session. Now this does come back, it's not a sales pitch, but from that session, I got an email from the AFP saying, look, we would like you to do the session, you've done the real session, virtually for us. So we had 350 people on a webinar doing a virtual session, I hate doing virtual sessions, but they said, they said, because yours was the top rated session of the entire conference. My personal brand did that. What about if you guys were featured in one of the sessions, put your hand up to Sunil or Peter, who are running today's conference. They're not in here, unfortunately. We're gonna give them a big round of applause, but tough, they'll get that later. Other things, show yourself in action. We do a newsletter as well, so sign up for that. But after this session, what you will find is lots of people reaching out to you. And I'll get lots of connection requests, but connect, here we go, connect wisely. If you get a connection request, and I'm sure you do from complete random people, don't worry, if you reject it, they don't get a thing that says, oh, Mike said no, thank you very much. It, actually, what they do is get nothing. So you can build up your network, just click ignore, block it if you want to and everything else. If, however, you do think they are someone worth having in your network and you can do the same the other way, if you want to reach out, maybe you meet, met someone today at the Windy City, you're talking to them, tell them why. Look, Brian, we had a quick chat about your new treasury management system or your implementation. We'd lovely, it'd be great to have you on my network. Don't do it from your phone. Why? Because you can't personalize the invite. Do it from your desktop. You can actually do it from your, your phone, but it's so complicated, I wouldn't bother. Explain why you want to, maybe even reference a shared connection. Right, now you might have seen this a little bit. Recommendations. Should you have them on your profile? Well, the answer is obviously yes. Who should give you a recommendation? Maybe one of your colleagues. Probably not. Maybe someone that's worked for you or worked with you, up or down. Not side to side, because otherwise, it's not necessarily going to be that impactful. Now, people have said to me, Mike, I'm not sure recommendations actually work. Well, you're wrong. Could you put your hands up and keep them up? Sorry, you had to do some work this morning to apologize. If you've ever known a little known website called Amazon, put your hand up if you bought anything off Amazon. Oh, there's a few hands up. Keep them up there, please. Fantastic. Could you keep your hand up if you've ever looked at, go put your hand down, come on, it's a bit of exercise. Um, if you've ever looked at the connections, the, you know, the star ratings. So you all have, fantastic. Could you keep your hand up if you've met that person? Oh, I'm a little bit nervous about your decision making now. You're buying from a total stranger is what you're saying, but no, you're not. 92% of consumers do trust others. Why? Because you want to trust your peers. If someone's going to buy that product, you want to check it. And I know that Amazon are cracking down on false reviews and everything else, but that's one of the key things. So it's, it's actually worth doing. So when you get recommendations, what should they be like? Oh, he's a great guy, but we lunch every day. No. Make it a commentary on you as a treasury professional. So could you just say a few words about what I was like as a boss or what I was like for you when I worked for you? Yes, actually ambitious, really you know, got stuck in and actually made some really positive change. So maybe give them some guidance. Okay. It's a big world. Networking. So it's personal brand. We talked a lot about that. We also talked about network. What I'm also going to do, by the way, we get about 10 minutes Q&A um, a bit later before we wrap up because the nasty Devon will come with a 10-minute sign. Don't you worry. Um, <clears throat> if you don't ask me questions, more for you. You're wasting an opportunity. I've come all the way here, 3,500 miles. Don't bother to ask a question. That's right. Go and get your next coffee. But you're going to miss out on a chance. It's up to you. But anyway, networking. I came up with this recently. The net is what you, you know, cast far and wide. 
Somebody once told me that. And then work. Could you put your hands up maybe if you received an email or I've connected to you on the app in the past couple of days? Put your hand up, nice and high please. High, high, high. There you go, about 50% of the room. We were sending mail shots. I was connecting to people. I was personalizing, I was saying, please come to the session, please, doing the work. Now you guys are treasury professionals. You're busy with your day jobs. You've got a choice. You can either do the work, lean into it, or just not bother. You can just sit there in your office day after day and the opportunities won't come knocking. They came knocking for uh, Joel when they, they came to him. We'll talk about Chris Fulton a bit later. They do the same with some of the other guys. When people come to you and ask you to come and work for them. Some other tips we're going to give you. Make sure I'm running to time. Well done. You're actually here today educating yourselves. So, and it's not easy. There are probably colleagues that are sitting in the office when you get out of this session. What I'd like you to do is not switch on your phones straight away. Give it five, 10 minutes. Maybe meet someone else, create a network. Who'd have believed it? So just hold off from that. But then make sure you follow up with everyone that you meet here at the conference to make the meeting impactful. Have an elevator pitch. Anyone know what an elevator pitch is? Oh, that's good that you don't. Fantastic. A few people do, but most people are like, what? What's an elevator pitch? I don't need to sell an elevator, surely. What it is, is about 30 seconds about who you are, what you do, who you work for, and then maybe just a little bit about the job you do. Now, if anyone's forgotten, can everyone just have a quick look? And then look at your badges, please. Everyone have a quick look. There you go. So now you know who you are, what you do, unless you've nicked someone's badge, which is bad. Um, now think of one fact about yourselves, you will need this later, that people will not know or may not know. Take a few seconds, something that people don't know about you, because that's going to form your elevator pitch. We will come up to Q&A in a minute. We've got a couple there. But developing yourself. I've likened it in the past to standing at the airport on one of those travel agents going the wrong direction. And you're going there and you're going backwards. So I tell you what, everybody else is working hard to develop themselves and get a network. They're not net coffeeing, they're actually getting out there and doing the work. So, questions, Q&A. Have we got questions from the audience? We can do microphones, but you can probably shout them out anyway. Ah, great. So, right, the question was, should you have recommendations all the time or just when you're looking for a job? Number one, if you have them when you're looking for a job, everyone knows. So do them in advance. Why do you do them in advance? Because people come to you, not you. It's doing the selling for you. If someone sees that and says, oh, they were a great treasury manager when they worked with me. In particular, they did this, this, this. You go, oh, hang on. That's what we need now. So I've got a Q&A. It is working, thank goodness. Yeah, so yeah, that's one of the other things. Now, someone actually asked me the other day, they wanted to change their LinkedIn profile and they were a little bit nervous about their boss seeing all the changes. They're like, what do I do? <sighs> Easy, go on to LinkedIn, set your privacy, just, just whilst you're doing it, update your profile, and then on a Friday night, whatever, under your privacy. And they don't get a big notification. You know, Mike's updated his profile, he's put his open to work or anything else. Don't put the open to work swoosh, that's bad. Yeah, that, yeah. Uh, pretty much they can see that big green swoosh. Yeah, we don't want that. So, other questions? One at the back. Uh, I know you might work with uh, introverts during your time as a treasury recruiter. What are some of the challenges that you see them facing on a day to day and how do you help them overcome it? Fantastic. Well, firstly, by doing exactly what you've done asking a question. Introverts. And the weird thing is, you might say, oh, Mike's really extrovert, he's going out there and stuff. I'll come to back to my questions, uh, my secret later. But I actually got asked this on the AFP session the other day. How do we help introverts get out of their comfort zone at conferences like this? Well, the first thing to do is have five to ten facts about yourself, your job, your company. So when someone's asking you, you're going to be like this. Oh, God, oh, God, how can I... Hang on. 
if you've already practiced your five or 10 facts about yourself and your company, you know what, exactly what you're doing. There you go, I've got the 10 minute warning from Devon. He's a nut, look at him. He's got the smiling out eyes of an assassin. Right, we're gonna keep on going. Um, if you have further questions, I'm, I'm, apologies to run out of time on that, but I can actually do some more coaching on that. And again, when you see me floating around for coffee later, you'll come up and I can give you a more detailed answer because my network and my brand has done the work for me. Right, power of marginal gains. Anyone heard this? No, it's fine. You might all see James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. That's one of the things he talks about in there. That is Sir Dave Brailsford, amazing cycling coach. Yes, I know there's no cyclist in the room. I'm not talking about that. We'll come back to that. Basically, he was the coach of the Great Britain cycling team. Until Dave showed up, in, let me get these facts right. Since 1908, oh, sorry again. Since 1908, they had won one medal. They were so bad, the manufacturers wouldn't let them ride their bikes in case they damaged sails. So what he decided to do with the team was make 1% differences. And they took along to any of the cycling meets their own mattresses, their own pillows, they heated leg and bum warmers so that their muscles were ready to go as soon as they got on the bike. Because, and up until that point, 110 years, they had no winners in the biggest cycling race in the world, Tour de France. No one had actually won it. He set a goal that within five years, by making these little 1% differences, they would win a Tour de France. They didn't do it in five years. They did it in three. And then they did it for the next six years in a row. Incredible. So... You as treasury professionals saying, hang on, I'm not a cyclist. It doesn't apply to me. What about if you were, not to make a massive change, make a 1% change in your lives? Let's just think about exercise, things, things you might do. If you were to make 1% shift, James Clear again talks about this. What if you were to say, look, I need to work on my health and fitness. Well, do a 10 minute walk every day. And you're saying, well, hang on, I'm a busy person. Well, that's all right. Park another five minutes away from the office. Five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening, 10 minutes. What about parking 15 minutes away from the office? 30 minutes. Actually looks at some of the numbers. If you did the 10 minute walk, that would be equivalent to 40 hours a year of walking, a week of walking per year. If you were to do the 30 minute walk, 15, 15, three weeks of walking, what a difference that would make. Now someone said, look, Mike, I'm not into my walking. But what about if you were spent 10 minutes on a self-development book on a Friday morning? He said, Before, on the way to work, I'm actually going to not just fall asleep, I'm going to read a self-development book. That's one of the key things. Now, I don't want to run out of time, so I'm going to keep moving. Let me introduce you to the amazing Chris Fulton, one of the best networkers I know. He was a guest on the podcast, also the treasurer at, now let me get this right, Scadden, Arp, Slate, Mega and Flom. Yeah. Glad when he moved firms, I've got to say. Chris is an amazing networker. He is an introvert. He actually doesn't, he finds it difficult. He said when we were talking, he's not particularly extrovert going out there and stuff like that. But what Chris does, when he's meeting a group of people and he works at it and stuff like that, he will then talk to people and say, oh yeah, can you talk to me? Sorry, can you give me a second? And he will just take their business card and he'll make a note about their conversation. You know, maybe their daughter was going to Duke University. Oh, actually, yeah, she's going to Duke. I went to Duke, right, thanks to this. And what he does, he then follows up and does an actual proper follow-up with them the next day over LinkedIn or whatever it might be, you know, congratulations and everything else. Now, what I want you guys to do, now I see that you've got some of your colleagues, this is the quick final exercise before Devin comes after me. How long have we got, Devin? Five minutes? Two, well, we'll have to be quick. Right. So I want you to look around the room. You're not allowed to talk to your colleagues and introduce yourself very quickly to someone else. It's amazing, isn't it? It's a networking personal branding session. Who'd have thought I had to come out of my comfort zone? Right, so quickly, please. Now, go and say hello to someone else, just quickly. You can carry this networking session into the rest of the conference. You can also double your network by connecting to me if you want to. Don't bother if you don't want to, I don't care. But the fact is, have a great conference. 
take these networking tips and go and get out of your comfort zone. Because they might be introverted, they might be extrovert. Go and make another connection. Thank you very much. That's it. Cool.